So a couple months ago, I did my Tales of an Industry Nobody, where I recounted my timeline of my work in the video game industry, and you guys really seemed to enjoy that video. And I wanted to go back to that. I want to keep doing more Tales of an Industry Nobody, but today I wanted to do something a little bit different. What's going on, everyone? Jay here from Square Peg. If you're new around here, please be sure to subscribe down below. We're on our way to 1,000 subs. Another type of video you guys really seem to enjoy are my Tier Maker videos, so that's what I'm doing today. I am taking my entire pile of games that I worked on, and I'm going to be ranking them and letting you know what I think about them today. And I'm only going to be doing it from a gameplay perspective. I think down the road I might do one where it was the actual development process, <laughs> and so you guys can get a little bit more inside baseball on that. But today, we we're just talking about gameplay and fun based on how they are today. Let's take a look. All right, so doing things a little bit differently than I normally do my tier rankers, just because I have such an intimate familiarity with these games, it doesn't really make sense to pre-rank them. I already know them. I don't really need to tell you what my opinions of them were because they're the same thing pretty much now. And I also wanted to do things the way that John Hancock has been doing his rankings lately, starting at the very bottom of the barrel and working my way up to the top tier. And first up is fantasy football. I worked on this, you, I guess you can call it a game. It was terrible. It was just a fantasy football draft picker. You couldn't even play fantasy football with it. It was that bad. It was a misguided idea and it was something I said was a bad idea. And yeah, it was, this was awful. This is an F. Next in the pile of awful is, oh, this one's actually a game and this is legitimately the worst game I ever worked on and that is The Sims Online. Now I know a lot of people have a lot of love for The Sims Online and The Sims franchise in general and hey, more power to you. I love The Sims games when they first came out, but The Sims Online is a hot mess of a game. It is an online game that requires you to complete tasks together with people. Picture the worst of a raid in World of Warcraft when things just fall apart and people are just popping in and out. That was The Sims Online from Jump. It was a bad mess of a game. I wish it was better because I think that the idea was really strong, but it just did not succeed at all. This one is an F. The final entry into our failure trifecta is NASCAR 08. Now, this is specifically for the PlayStation 3 version. The 360 version's all right, but the PS3 was a special breed of awful. We didn't have enough test kits to go around when this game went into development. We had enough for Madden, and Madden got the most of the test kits, and rightfully so. Madden was the cash cow for the studio. Madden deserved to have the tech. And we kind of got our stuff late. We were behind the eight ball from start, and things never really worked out. When the game was initially announced, it was revealed that we were going to have 43 players online simultaneously, so you could have a full field of drivers in your NASCAR Sprint Cup series, and nothing ever came together. We were still saying we were going to have 43 drivers up until about two weeks before we went gold. We ended up dropping down to 16, and that was a struggle. But that's not why this game is so bad. This game is so bad because of the physics in the game. This is our first time working with the PlayStation 3 and NASCAR, and we rewrote the physics engine from scratch, and it fell apart miserably. The game is not fun to play. It looks good, but it is so difficult to drive and do anything that it gets an F. All right, so when you are developing an American football game, typically you want to have American developers doing that, but that was not what we did with Madden 09 for the DS. We actually had an English development team, and they were amazing. The guys were great. They tried to sneak a few things by us by putting some foul language in there, but luckily we were all kind of Anglophiles at the time, so we caught up on the bad language they were trying to sneak into the game. And, you know, honestly, Madden 09 gets a really bad rap. But to me, this was the little game that couldn't... This was something that we had a lot of ambition for, and we just didn't have the money to do half the things we wanted to do. But we did get paper football into the game, and it plays really well, and it's a lot of fun. Now, look, this is basically a PS1 game with paper football tacked onto it, and I'm not going to tell you that it's great. It's not a great game. It gets the point across. It plays like Madden did back at the start of the PS1. It just doesn't look great on the DS. But I'm telling you right now, this is one that I will always love that I worked on. This is one of the only DS games I actually worked on and it's something that I truly treasured because I love the DS so much. And Madden 09 for the DS is, uh, it's bad. I mean, it's a D, but it's something I love anyway. Now this game right here is the game that actually got me to love the Xbox. This is NASCAR Thunder 2004. Now the footage you're seeing here is for the PS2 version because my Xbox is currently not working, but I do have the PS2 version as well. and. This is a game that I just... Look, it's it's an average game. It's it's something that was kind of middle of the road when it released. It continues to be kind of middle of the road. It's very serviceable. It gets the point across. It's a sports simulation. 
But the game itself was something that introduced me to the Xbox. It was the first time I'd ever worked on an Xbox, first time I'd ever picked up an Xbox controller, and first time I'd ever really done anything outside of the PlayStation 1, Nintendo products, and the Sega Genesis. So this kind of opened my eyes to an entirely new world of gaming. And I have to thank this game for that. Because of this game, I bought my first Xbox, and I bought Knights of the Old Republic, and I bought Rally Sport Challenge, and I got Fable, and Dungeons and Dragons Heroes, and Crimson Skies, because of NASCAR Thunder 2004. It's not a great game. Like I said, it's very much middle of the road, middle of the pack. It's a C. But I gotta be honest with you, I will always love it because it gave me that. Now, NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 was one where we started to switch up the NASCAR formula a little bit. Now, this one featured my favorite driver. I'm not a NASCAR fan by any stretch of the imagination, but when I played hockey, my jersey number was 29, Kevin Harvick's number was 29. His first race in the main Cup Series was on my birthday, so it was kind of serendipitous that this dude was on the cover. He became my favorite driver immediately. And I just really appreciate what this game tried to do. It introduced a new mode called Fight to the Top, where you were able to create a driver and build yourself up and go through the championship series. The field got bigger. You were able to add different series, like the truck series and some of the funny cars. And then there was all different stuff as well with the Chase for the Cup mode, where you're able to do the last 10 races of the season. This is the first time that NASCAR had switched into doing that mode, the Chase for the Championship. So we tried to incorporate all that stuff into the game. And we got most of the way there. The problem was it was still a game that was relying on the 2004 and the 2003 engine, so it didn't quite get over the hump. It's a good game. It is middle of the road at the end of the day. It's a C, just like NASCAR Thunder 2004, but I do have a lot of fun with this one. Our first game in the above average listing goes to NASCAR 06 Total Team Control, and this one gets the nod over 05 and 04 because of how ambitious it was. First off, we introduced a new squad-based gameplay into the game where you were actually able to control the other drivers on your team by hot swapping to them and moving them up and down the field. You were also able to interact with your crew chief via the PlayStation or Xbox headset, which was unbelievable to me. You were able to create your own racing organizations. There were driver attributes and personalities. Like This was like our attempt at making something that was a big deal for NASCAR, and we banked on this being a huge hit. There was new visuals, new rollover mechanics, and new damage models that were in there, and it was a lot of fun. I really wish that this game had picked up more because I think that this had an opportunity to be something huge for EA, but it just didn't get there. People just didn't care about our NASCAR games. I will say though, as someone who has played it at the time and fell in love with it and has played it now and still loves it, NASCAR 06 Total Team Control is above average. It's a B. Speaking of ambitious games, this is one that I remember when this game got announced and we found out that it was going to be developed by DICE, it kind of really made me excited to be in the industry again. Mirror's Edge was something that I just wanted to be a success and I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to test this game. And I had the opportunity to be the external testing senior test lead for Tiburon when this game was about to go gold. I love Mirror's Edge. I love Faith. I love the entire universe of Mirror's Edge. And being able to play this game was something that I just really, really loved. Now, you might be wondering when I'm giving it such a glowing review why it isn't ranked higher, and because I love it doesn't mean that the faults inherent in the game's design aren't readily apparent. The game is unbelievably hard. The physics in the game take a lot of getting used to. The visuals in the game are a little bit, I want to say monochromatic for lack of a better term. There's, it's kind of a lot of reds and whites, so you can kind of lose yourself in the game and not really see where you need to go or pay attention to where you need to go. And that's a little frustrating at times, so the game can get to the point where you just do kind of want to turn it off, as you are seeing me die repeatedly in this game. And that's kind of the other thing of it, too, is there are times where you are sure you're going to make a jump and you just don't land it. If this game could have been played in third-person mode, I think it would have been a massive success. I love the idea of a first-person parkour runner game, but this game just doesn't quite get over the finish line. Mirror's Edge is above average. I do think it's a solid B, there are just small things that could have been adjusted to make this game an absolute stellar game for EA. The first console game I ever worked on was NCAA Football 2004 for the Nintendo GameCube, and I was so excited to be put on a GameCube title. It was the only thing I wanted coming out of training class. I just wanted to work on a Nintendo thing. If I only did one thing in the industry, it was going to be putting out a Nintendo product. And I did. I really hate 
football. <laughs> okay, I need to make that very clear. I am not a football fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I am so proud of the game we made and the absolutely just phenomenal gameplay present in this game that I, I, I can still play it today. Like, this is going on almost 20 years since its release, and it's something I still enjoy playing. Hundreds of schools to choose from, deep gameplay options, huge playbooks for each school. Dynasty mode, to this day, is the absolutely best franchise mode I have ever played. It does get dragged down a little bit by the muddy visuals, so I can't quite put it up to an A, but NCAA football does get a B. EA Sports. It's in the game. Kind of like my experience working on the GameCube came my experience working on the Wii. When the Wii released, I was really excited about the possibilities of what the platform offered. The controller intrigued me, I was excited by it, and getting put on our first experience working on the Tiger Woods franchise at Tiburon with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 09 All Play just made me so happy. The game, uh, let's be honest right up front, the game looks terrible. It is not a good looking game. I mean, it, it, it is at best PlayStation 2 visual, so it doesn't look great up against its Xbox 360 and PS3 cousins, but the gameplay itself blows those two games out of the water. It's a lot of fun. Being able to use the Wii Remote as a golf club is just natural. It's exciting. It puts you into the game. It makes you feel like you're part of the golf course and its surroundings. I'm not going to tell you it's the best game I've played, but it is definitely something that I have a lot of fun with. There are minor things throughout the game that bring it down, but even with that, the game is above average. I give Tiger Woods PGA Tour 09 a B. Stepping up to the A rank, and we have my first time working with the absolutely brilliant Kudo Sonoda and the fantastic folks at EA Chicago with Fight Night Round 2. I got to work on the GameCube version, so not only did I get a brilliant sports simulation with Fight Night, I also got the advantage of having Super Punch-Out on my disc. This is one of my favorite games that I worked on. It is absolutely deserving to be near the top of the list here in an A rank, and I think if you've never played this one, you should seek it out. And I'm not gonna say that you should definitely get it on the GameCube. I mean, both of the other versions are good as well, but the GameCube version, my personal favorite, just because you are able to get something like Super Punch-Out on there. It's kind of a two-for-one deal. I definitely give Fight Night Round 2 an A. One of my favorite things that we did my last year at EA was we kind of did our version of NFL Blitz on the Xbox Live Arcade with Madden Arcade. And this one gets high ranks for me, not only because I think the game is genuinely fun and genuinely well made, but also because of the test team I had on it. This was my favorite group of guys that I ever worked with. They are people that I keep in touch with to this day and that I treasure in my life and that are just valuable to who I am, not only as a QA professional, but as a person. The Madden Arcade team was spectacular and we made a great game. I was actually let go from EA when this game was in certification, and it broke my heart because I wasn't able to see this through to the end. But the game is great. It gives you wonderful arcade action. It's a lot of fun to play with all the NFL teams in here, classic players from around 2009, and it just plays brilliantly well. If I didn't have as good of a test team, I can tell you this probably would have ranked a little bit lower, but Madden NFL Arcade gets an A for me. I always loved it when I got things kind of tossed my way. My specialty for a couple of years was being the guy that interfaced with external studios. I worked with EA Chicago, and I also worked with EA Canada on NCAA 07 March Madness. This is a fantastic college basketball game, kind of with the same attributes that NCAA Football 2004 had. Hundreds of schools to choose from, fantastic players, although you don't know who any of them are, you just got to kind of look up their numbers for that year. But it's a lot of fun to play. It had solid basketball bones that I think really showed when EA Canada really leaned into their strengths of developing NCAA March Madness and NBA Live at the same time. I know things kind of went off the rails with NBA Live and they don't have the NCAA March Madness license anymore, but this is something I look back at and I remember fondly because of the awesome test team we had and the fact that the game is just really fun to play. Solid basketball mechanics, really good fundamentals involved here, and the game looks pretty good for how old it is. NCAA March Madness 07 gets an A. And now we move on to our first of two entries for Tiger 10. This one is for the next-gen consoles. I call them, okay, so a little bit of background on that. I call them next-gen consoles still because that's what we called them when they released. But this is now Gen 7, so this is Xbox 360, PS3. And this game is really good. It is solidly built, it looks fantastic, and it plays wonderfully well. 
it gets an A for me. But also, we have Tiger Woods PGA Tour 10 for the Wii. And this one was really fun. The Wii Motion Plus edition made things that much more crisp and that much more easy to play. And the game is great. Both Tiger 10 for the Xbox 360, PS3, and for the Wii get an A. So we come to the S tier, and that is the top of the list. And we come to my second work with EA Chicago, and that is on Fight Night Round 3. This is my first time as a senior QA manager. I was in charge of everything. Xbox 360 and PS3 were under my watch, and I could not have asked for a better game to work on. Fight Night Round 3 delivers fundamentally in visuals, sound, design, gameplay, and depth. Everything hits in this game, and that is not a play on words. Everything works. The soundtrack is even fantastic. There's literally nothing about this game I don't like. It plays beautifully well. It was a ton of fun to work on with one of the absolute best development teams I ever had the honor to work with. Fight Night Round 3 is an S tier in every sense of the rating. One of the strangest games I worked on and one of my absolute favorites was Henry Hatsworth in The Puzzling Adventure. And if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I've suggested this game numerous times. And I will continue to do so because I honestly think it is one of the finest games ever made for the Nintendo DS. The pedigree behind this game is immense. The guys who made this went on to make World of Goo, as well as a ton of other games that are absolutely fantastic. The gameplay in Henry Hatsworth is split into two distinct phases. There is a puzzle mode on the bottom screen and a platformer on the top. And if you are able to build up your meters enough, you enter tea time where you get to control a giant steam powered mech. Yeah, I let that pause for a second. Just I wanted, I wanted to let steam powered mech settle in. The game looks fantastic and plays brilliantly with wonderful power ups and excellent swapping in between the platforming and the puzzle mode of the game. But not to be overlooked is the absolutely stellar soundtrack that Henry Hatsworth in the puzzling adventure has. It is perfect. Henry Hatsworth gets an S. And our last entry comes to NFL Street for the Nintendo GameCube, one of my favorite games ever that I worked on, because this game is so over the top and so wonderfully done and plays so beautifully that it couldn't be anything but an S tier. If you have never played this game, you need to find it and pick it up. This or the sequel, both play absolutely wonderfully, but NFL Street itself kind of broke the mold on what people expected. Everyone loved NBA Street, and when EA announced that they were going to be doing ones for FIFA and for NFL, people kind of rolled their eyes a little bit thinking that this was going to be overkill. But NFL Street nails it. It plays perfectly. The game looks wonderful, it runs great, fantastic playbooks, and one of my favorite little aspects of this game is both the soundtrack and the player chatter in the game. Because a lot of the guys that did the chatter in the game are guys I worked with in QA. What's up, AP? NFL Street gets an S. All right, guys, there you have it. My entire back catalog of games that I worked on in the video game industry and what I think of each one today. I don't think it should come as any surprise that Henry Hatsworth was absolutely my favorite. I will admit, NFL Arcade does get points added for being just an absolutely wonderful team to work with. It might not hold up as well as other games that are on this list, but I personally loved NFL Arcade, and it's something that I will always treasure. But those are just my opinions. If you have played any of these games, let me know in the comments down below what you think of each of them. What is your favorite that I worked on? What is your least favorite that I worked on? If it is not NASCAR 08, I am curious as to what your least favorite is, because NASCAR 08 was a bit of a beast to, to get out the door. It was it was not a fun process and a, not a terribly fun game. Please hit like, please subscribe down below if you are new around here, like I said at the start of the video. And in particular, if you enjoy the work that I do here, consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor or check out our merchandise where you can get cool shirts like this one here, the Square Pegs Coin Explosion. Links to both sites will be in the pinned comment down below. Until next time, guys, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. It's in the game.